Hi, I'm Jason Collins, and this video is on Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule is a method for estimating the conditional probability of an event. Specifically, Bayes' rule allows us to use the following information to estimate the conditional probability of outcome A given outcome B. The unconditional probability of outcome A, the probability of observing outcome B given outcome A, and the total probability of outcome B. The formula for Bayes' rule is the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B, which equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. The denominator P of B is the total probability of event B. If the total probability of event B is not directly available, we can often calculate it with information concerning the conditional probabilities of B given the occurrence, or not, of A. The probability of B equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A, plus the probability of B given not A times the probability of not A. We can therefore write Bayes' rule as follows. The probability of A given B equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B, which equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B given A times the probability of A plus the probability of B given not A times the probability of not A. We can think of Bayes' rule as how we should update our beliefs in light of a new event. Rational agents should update their beliefs using Bayes' rule. In this case, the following elements are involved. A hypothesis, H. For example, the coin is fair or the coin is rigged. Second, the prior probability of the hypothesis H being true, P of H. For example, the coin is fair has a prior probability of 0.5. Third, the probability of observing event E given a hypothesis H, P of, of E of H. For example, the coin shows ahead has a probability of 0.5 given that the coin is fair. And finally, the posterior probability of the belief H given the event E, the probability of the hypothesis given the event. For example, we would have an, we would have an updated probability in our hypothesis that the coin is fair based on the coin showing ahead. Under this framing, Bayes' rule is formulated as follows. The probability of the hypothesis given the event, that is our posterior belief, equals the probability of the event given the hypothesis times the probability of the hypothesis, that is our prior belief, divided by the probability of the event, which in turn equals the probability of the event given the hypothesis times the probability of the hypothesis divided by the probability of the event given the hypothesis times the probability of the hypothesis, plus the probability of the event given the hypothesis is not true, times the probability of the hypothesis not being true. I'll now discuss some examples of Bayes' rule. For the first example, suppose your friend has two coins. One coin is, a fa is fair with a head on one side and a tail on the other. The second coin is a rigged coin with a head on both sides. Your friend takes one of the coins and flips it. The coin shows a head. What is the probability that, he, that this coin is the rigged coin? We will assume that he randomly selected either coin with a probability of 50%. We take that as our prior belief. The probability of rigged equals 0 0.5. The probability of a head if it is the rigged coin is one. The probability of head given rigged equals one. To use Bayes' rule, we need the total probability that a head comes up, probability of a head. Here we use the formula for total probability. The probability of a head equals the probability of a head given the coin is rigged times the probability that the coin is rigged plus the probability of a head given the coin is fair times the probability that the coin is fair. And that equals one times 0.5 plus 0.5 times 0.5 equals 0 0.75. Putting this into Bayes' rule, the probability that the coin is rigged given you have see a head equals the probability of seeing a head given the coin being rigged, times the probability that the coin is rigged divided by the probability of a head. That equals one times 0.5 divided by 0.75, which equals two on three. Your friend flips the coin again and gets another head. 
what is the updated probability that the coin is rigged? The prior belief is now P rigged equals two thirds from our last answer. The total probability of flipping a head equals the probability of head, which equals probability of a head given rigged times probability that the coin is rigged plus probability of getting a head given the coin is fair times probability of a fair coin equals one times two thirds plus 0.5 times one third equals five on six. Putting this into Bayes' rule, the probability that the coin is rigged given a head equals the probability of a head given the coin is rigged times the probability that the coin is rigged divided by probability of a head, which equals one times two thirds divided by five on six, which equals four on five. Your belief that the coin is rigged has now increased to 80%. Your friend flips the coin 10 more times and get 10, gets 10 more heads. What is the updated probability that the coin is rigged? We use our prior belief of P rigged equals four on five from our most recent answer. The total probability of flipping 10 heads is P of 10 heads equals the probability of 10 heads given the coin is rigged times the probability that the coin is rigged plus the probability of getting 10 heads given the coin is fair times the probability that the coin is fair which equals one, you will get 10 heads with a rigged coin with certainty, times four and five, plus a half to the power of 10, that's the probability of getting 10 heads with a fair coin, times one fifth, which equals 0 0.8001953. Putting this into Bayes' rule, the probability that the coin is rigged, given you have now seen another 10 heads, equals the probability of seeing 10 heads with a rigged coin, times the, prob times the probability that the coin is rigged, divided by the probability of seeing 10 heads, which in turn equals one times four on five, which of course is 0.8, divided by 0.8001953, which equals 0.99976. We now believe the coin is rigged with greater than 99.9% .9 probability. For the second example, you have two urns filled with balls. Urn 1 has 30% black balls and 70% yellow balls. Urn 2 has 70% black balls and 30% yellow balls. The labels have fallen off the urns, so you do not know which urn is which. You reach into one of the urns and pull out a yellow ball. What is the probability that you have drawn the ball from urn 1? Bayes, the Bayes rule formula to solve this problem is the probability that the urn is urn 1, given you draw a yellow ball, equals the probability of drawing a yellow ball given it is urn one times the probability of urn one divided by the probability of drawing a yellow ball. We take the prior probability of the ball coming from urn one to be 50%. The probability of drawing a yellow ball from urn one is 70%. Therefore, the total probability of drawing a yellow ball is probability of yellow equals probability of drawing a yellow ball from urn one times the probability that, the, that it is urn one plus the probability of yellow given urn two times the probability of urn two. And that equals 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.5, which equals 0 0.5. Now putting this into Bayes' rule, the probability that the, the urn is urn one given we draw a yellow ball equals the probability of drawing a yellow ball given it is urn one times the probability of urn one divided by the probability of drawing a yellow ball equals 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 on 0 0.5, which equals 0 0.7. You put the first ball back in the urn, reach in again and pull out a black ball. What is the probability that you've drawn the ball from urn one? Given we have already drawn one ball and updated our probability, we'll use the prior probability of P urn one equals 0 0.7. Given this, the total probability of drawing a black ball equals the probability of a black ball, which equals the probability of getting a black ball given it is urn one times the probability of urn one, plus the probability of drawing a black ball given it is urn two times the probability of urn two. This equals 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, which equals 0 0.42. Putting this into Bayes' rule, the probability that is urn one given you've drawn a black ball equals the probability of a black ball given it is urn one times the probability of urn one divided by the probability of a black ball equals 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.42, which equals 0 0.42 times 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.42, which equals 0 0.42.
equals 0 0.5. It is 50% chance that it is urn one. The answer of 0 0.5 should seem, in, should seem intuitive. We have now drawn one black and one yellow ball. In combination, this is uninformative and we are back at our initial prior of 0 0.5. For the third example, we will return to the Monty Hall problem. Recall this framing. Suppose you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the others, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host who knows what's behind the doors opens another door, say number three, which has a goat. He then says to you, do you want to pick door number two? Is it your advantage to switch your choice? Assume the rules of this game show are that first, the host must always open a door that you did not choose. Second, the host must always open a door to reveal a goat and never the car. Third, the host must always offer you the choice to switch between the chosen door and the remaining closed door. We want to know the probability that the car is behind door two given the host opened door three. We want to know P of C2 given D3. To determine this using Bayes' rule, we'd use the following formula. The probability of car two given door three equals the probability of door three given car two times the probability of car two divided by the probability of door three. P of D3 is the probability that the host opens door three. It is calculated using the formula for total probability. The probability that the host opens door three equals the probability of the host opening door three given the car is behind door one times the probability of the car being behind door one, plus the probability of the host opening door three, given the car is behind door two, times the probability of the car being behind door two, plus the probability of the host opening door three, given the car is behind door three, times the probability of the car being behind door three. Each of those elements are as follows. P of C1, P of, P of C2, and P of C3 are a prior probability of the car being behind each door, one, two, or three, which is one third. P of D3 given C1 is the probability that the host opens door three given the car is behind door one. The host could open either, door, either of door two or door three as neither has the car behind it. So the probability of door three is one in two. P of D3 given C2 is the probability that the host opens door three given the car is behind door two. The host must open that door, so the probability is one. They cannot open the door you have chosen or the door that the car is behind. P of D3 given C3 is the probability that the host opens door three given the car is behind door three. The host cannot open a door to show the car, so the probability is zero. Returning to our equations, the total probability of the host opening door three is probability of the host opening door three equals probability of the host opening door three given the car is behind door one, times the probability of the car being behind door one, plus the probability of the host opening door three, given the car is behind door two, times the probability of the car being behind door two, plus the probability of the host opening door three, given the car is behind door three, times the probability of the car being behind door three, which equals uh, a one, one times a third, plus a half times a third, plus plus zero times a third equals one in two. Now we can calculate the probability that the car is behind door two, given the host opened door three. The probability of the car being behind door two, given the host opened door three, equals the probability of the host opening door three, given the car is behind door two, times the probability of the car being behind door two, divided by the probability of the host opening door three, equals one times one third on one half, which equals two on three. The contestant should switch doors.